In all elections, there will be a method of voting and a method of counting the votes. The voting method for most elections conducted in Australia is the preferential voting system, where the voter numbers preferences for candidates. Full preferential voting, the system used for South Australian House of Assembly parliamentary elections, requires an elector to indicate a preference for every candidate using sequential numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. Optional preferential requires one preference to be indicated for the candidate most preferred by the elector and, if they choose, they may give further preferences to other candidates. Partial preferential is the voting method referred to where preferences must be indicated for at least the number of candidates to be elected. In this method, the elector may also indicate further preferences. There are two methods of counting votes used under the preferential system. Exclusion, bottoms up, is used in elections to elect one person and requires a candidate to receive an absolute majority, 50% plus one, of the formal votes to be elected. The proportional representation method of counting votes is used in elections to elect more than one person and requires a candidate to achieve a quota or proportion of the votes to be elected. This video looks specifically at proportional representation method of counting votes. This system is used in multi-member electorates where more than one candidate is to be elected to represent the electorate. It is used for South Australian local government elections and to elect members to the Legislative Council, Upper House. The proportional representation system is based on election by achieving a quota or proportion of the votes. It is designed to elect parties, groups and independents generally in proportion to the number of votes they receive. If a group of candidates or party receives twice as many votes as any other group or party, they will generally win twice the elected membership of the other. The large groups and parties typically field enough candidates to win a majority of the vacancies, providing they receive enough votes. To be elected, a candidate must receive a proportion or quota of the vote which is worked out like this. Let's see an example of this system to elect three candidates in suburbia. Each of the 20,000 electors in suburbia marked all their preferences on a ballot paper using consecutive numbers, as done in any full preferential election. We initially distribute the votes according to the first preferences. Having distributed the first preference votes, we next calculate the quota for suburbia. All of suburbia's 20,000 voters have voted correctly. Suburbia has three vacant seats. This election must have three winners. Quota for suburbia equals 5,001. We have a winner already. Mary Jones has achieved the quota and is elected. Now her surplus votes must be distributed at a transfer level. Following a preference distribution, if two or more candidates exceed the quota, the surplus votes of the candidate with the higher number of votes is distributed first. Let's redistribute Mary Jones's surplus votes. But which 999 should we take? The ones that happen to be on the top? What makes them so special? What if they're quite different to the other 5001? The answer is that we need to look at the second preference marked on all of them, just to be fair, then redistribute them according to a transfer value. This method uses the preferences of all 6,000 ballot papers received by the elected candidate and distribute them as 999 votes. Here's how we work out the transfer value for Mary Jones's surplus votes. Transfer value equals number of surplus votes divided by number of ballot papers received. Transfer value equals 999 divided by 6000 equals 0 0.1665. Here are Mary Jones's second preferences. 1000 are marked for Fred McPhee, 2000 are marked for Rocco Bruno, 3,000 are marked for Joseph Schmidt. Here are Mary Jones's second preferences. 1,000 are marked for Fred McPhee. 1,000 times 0.1665 equals 166.5. 
166 votes for Fred McPhee. 2,000 are marked for Rocco Bruno. 2,000 times 0 0.1665 equals 333. 333 votes for Rocco Bruno. 3,000 are marked for Joseph Schmidt. 3,000 times 0 0.1665 equals 499.5. 499 votes for Joseph Schmidt. Who has been elected to the second position? Rocco Bruno is elected to the second vacancy. Let's redistribute Rocco Bruno's surplus votes. First, we work out their transfer value. Transfer value equals number of surplus votes divided by number of ballot papers received. Here's how we work out the transfer value for Rocco Bruno's votes. Transfer value equals 332 divided by 7,000 number of ballot papers received equals 0 0.047428. Here are Rocco Bruno's next available preferences. Preferences for Mary Jones are ignored as she is already elected. 3,000 are marked for Fred McPhee, 4,000 are marked for Joseph Schmidt. We multiply each number by the transfer value. 3,000 are marked for Fred McPhee. 3,000 times 0 0.047428 equals 142.284. 142 votes for Fred McPhee. 4,000 are marked for Joseph Schmidt. 4,000 times 0 0.047428 equals 189.712. 189 votes for Joseph Schmidt. Look at the new totals. Have any of the continuing candidates reached quota yet? Correct. None of the continuing candidates has a quota, so the candidate with the least votes is excluded. Riley is excluded and her parcel of first preference votes, 3,000, are distributed at a transfer value of 1 to the continuing candidates according to the next available preference. 1,000 are marked for Fred McPhee, 1,000 votes for Fred McPhee. 2,000 are marked for Joseph Schmidt, 2,000 votes for Joseph Schmidt. Who has been elected to the third position? Correct. Joseph Schmidt is the third candidate elected with 5,188 votes. So the final result is Mary Jones, Rocco Bruno and Joseph Schmidt have each been elected.